God so much for everything he's done in all of our lives. I don't know about you, but man, I'm just thankful that he gave his son Jesus, who died on a cross and gave his life. You have to excuse me a little bit. This morning I have a pretty yucky cold, so I may sneeze, I may have to blow my nose, but I made my choice to come to church today and do this anyhow, so praise God. So I need some helpers with communion. Liz, come on down. Give me some helpers who would like to pass out communion. Janine, come. Todd, come. We need to get this stuff. So those are the drinks. If you'll take those, there's three trays there. We need some more. Bethany, you coming? All right, cool. Lisa, come help. Thank you. Yes, please. <laughs> well, maybe. Mm -hmm. I guess she grabbed them. We're good, I guess. You know, Jesus told us to do this in remembrance of him until he comes. And I don't know about you, I'm glad he came the first time, but he's coming the second time. That is our hope. I was talking to God the other day, and I was like, God, I don't know why you just don't come and just get us out of this messy world. And he really started speaking to my heart, and he asked me a question, and he brought someone's name into my life, and he said, would you like me not to give them the chance of salvation and them to stay in eternal judgment? And I'm like, uh, no. So he's long-suffering, not willing that any would perish, but all would come to repentance. And that's what this is all about. And he said to do this remembrance of him. So we're going to take some bread. We're going to take some, don't worry, it's not wine. It's grape juice. So we just want you to participate if you choose to. Yeah, we need up here too. You should. Yep, I do. Thank you. Almost dropped it.
Anyone not get something? It says, on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the bread. And it says that, let me get my thing on so I can move my scriptures going through here. And it says he spoke and he prayed thanksgiving and he broke the bread. So we're going to pray. Father, we thank you, man, Lord, so much for what you've done in our lives and for the ways, God, that you've touched every person in this place. And God, if there's someone in here that doesn't know you, I pray, Lord, today would be the day that they would decide to follow you. Because, Lord, you paid much too high of cost for us. But, Lord, we thank you for that cost. And, Father, we don't understand always why you loved the world so much. But, God, thank you for loving the world to send your son. And, God, we do this in celebration of his life and the price that he paid at Calvary. And we just thank you and praise you and worship you that you're a God of hope and a second chance. It says he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. So I want you to take the bread, break it, and take eat this time. He said when the supper was over, he did the same with the cup. You know, I actually caught that when Paul was talking about that. That means they had the whole meal after breaking the bread. And at the end of it, he pulled out a cup and said, okay, you guys ate the meal. Now let me have the cup with you. He said, did the same with the cup. He said, this is the cup, is the new promise made by my blood. Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus Christ? So take that blood at this time or the cup that represents the blood and drink it at this time. Thank you, Father, for what you've done for us and the price you paid at Calvary. And Lord, we just anticipate your return, but God, until you come, we will labor And we will work and we will try to get as many people as we know how, Lord, to know you and to love you and to serve you. And we'll give you all the glory and all the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. Hey, we have a brand new song this morning. It's called Echoes. It goes with this. So if you'll stand back up and get ready to put another song of worship in, worship God with echoes. You may have never heard this song before, but you're going to like it. Come on.
Welcome to the Rock Church on this chilly winter morning. Yes. <laughs> I'm Bethany. I'm the outreach pastor here at the Rock Church. And if I haven't had a chance to welcome you yet, I'm so glad that you're here. And I would love to be able to connect with you. So before, before we move on to that, though, I have to remind you of our mission here at the Rock Church, which is helping families. Changing, changing lives. lives through the awesome, amazing love of God. Amen. So if you are visiting with us today, I would love it if you would go to our website, which is yourrock.org. <laughs> oh, you're waiting for me, Yes, huh? I'm waiting for you. All right, I got it now. Click, click, click. There I'm it on is. the right page. Ta-da! Yourrock.org. You can click on that little I'm new thing and put in your information. And that's just how we follow up and connect with you and let you know what's going on and ask for prayer requests, anything However we can help you and answer questions, we want to be available, especially at Christmas time. Things are so crazy busy, and we want you to be thinking, thinking about Jesus. And yeah. the reason that we celebrate Christmas is his birth, that he came for us. And as we just celebrated and remembered in communion, he came as a baby so he could die on the cross to forgive us, which is 
Awesome. And he's coming back again someday. Yeah. And that's the cool part. Exactly. So you can go to our website for that. You can also give online if you want to make a donation toward a certain thing or if you want to give just in general to the church. Little purple plus sign is where you can give. We also have little green boxes in the back, ones at the doorway and one out at the Welcome Center for, you know, old school cash checks. Sure, why not? Yes. <laughs> they all work. They all work. And they all yes. pay bills, so that's exactly. awesome. Exactly. And, and so yeah, we love you guys, and we thank you guys so much for giving yeah. and for blessing and for doing that kind of stuff. If you yep. look up front, we've got four new video games that are going to go to the arcade. So thanks. Santa did not bring those, by no. the way. They were donations from all of you. Yes. And we, we appreciate everyone that gave toward the video games, and there's more exciting stuff to come for our, our arcade. There is. If you're visiting here and you're like, why do you have video games? <laughs> well, that's just part of the uniqueness of the Rock Church. <laughs> yes. Is that we have a fun center here on Saturday nights. So there's an arcade that's actually in the nursery. It's a nursery slash Nursery arcade. slash arcade. <laughs> it's double duty. Yes, absolutely. We have rock climbing out here. We do laser tag in the next gen wing. We have indoor and caves over there. Yeah, we have bounce houses in here. It's crazy fun, and it's a great way for us to connect with people in our community and show them God's love. Absolutely. So thank you to everyone that was here last night serving. Yeah. And loving on everyone, all the kids. We had a birthday party last night, so it was it was great fun. And a, a lot of the kids that were here had never been in here before, and they're always just so like, "What is this place? Like, <laughs> where do you? Where's that? Oh, okay. So it's 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 fun to see their faces light up and." And the birthday boy, I mean, his mom had to drag him out of here last night. <laughs> so that was cool. He'd never been here before. It was a recommendation from a friend. So it was very exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And we've got some other exciting things coming soon. What? And that's Christmas Eve service at 6.30 p.m. We're only doing one service on Christmas Eve. So what we'd like yes. you to do, if you would, sign up your kids for Children's Church, because we are doing Children's Church. And they're going to have Crazy a special kids. something going on over there. I'm not yes. sure what it is, but Ben and Tony have been working on yep. something unique and different for the kids. So we're trying to get all the kids out of here so we have enough room for all the people to sit. Yes, absolutely. So it's going to be a little interesting, but God's mm -hmm. going to be good all the time. And, and then wait, if you... Wait, Pastor Terry, are we having uh, Christmas service on Sunday morning? No. Okay. No service no Sunday Christmas morning. Christmas Sunday <laughs> service. If we keep no. reminding you, then you'll remember. <laughs> yeah, don't come to church on that day. We won't be open. No. We want you to spend time with your family yes. and enjoy your family. Family is important. Absolutely. And we want you to do that. And then on Christmas Eve, we're going to be doing a special offering for the church. Um, we're trying to change the carpet in the nursery slash arcade. It was changed about, I don't know, about 10 years ago, 8 years ago, somewhere around there. But it's worn out. Yeah. Too many kids running through it. And the good problem to yes, have. Yes, I saying. actually <laughs> ordered the carpet this week in faith. It was yes. $2,184. It's being shipped to straight and clear. Mike and yes. them are going to unload it for us because I needed a forklift. And I'm like, well, I don't have a forklift to unload carpet, but I know somebody who does. Yes. So it's going to be gone there. And this is the flavor we bought. The flavor. Is it, is it like scratch and sniff lick yes, or what? Yes, scratch is, and that's sniff. That's the flavor? It's scratch, scratch and sniff glow <laughs> in the dark. Yeah. But it's going to be glow in the dark, so we're going to have, we're going to be putting black lights in the arcade for family fun, maybe for our, for nursery too, they might like glowing in the dark, I don't know. Or they they, they can chase the lost. stars. Yeah, they could crawl around on the floor chasing yes. the stars. Maybe. My brother-in-law actually installs carpet, and we couldn't get it in squares, we got it in rolls, mm -hmm. and he's volunteered to come and put it in for free for us, which is Yay. really a big blessing. So all we have to do is buy the materials, and he'll do the labor, which is awesome. It is. It's so, so cool to see how when um, God gives Terry these visions, and then, and then God puts all the people in place that he yeah. needs to make it happen. Because how many churches have somewhere they could have a carpet delivered that needed a forklift? Yes. Oh, okay, don't worry. We have that in our church. And yes. then when they told us that we couldn't get the little squares, he's like, okay, I now i got to get the carpet installed. Oh, yeah. Our brother-in-law does that. Okay, thanks, Lord. You already had it all figured out before we even yep. went to order it. And he gave us the measurements and how to get the right dye lots and how to get the patterns to match and all that. And yep. Give them all the instructions. And it's getting delivered on December 22nd. So, yes. Like, that's a miracle in and of itself. Especially in our world of right now. <laughs> yeah. So, 
we're so very excited we're going to be trying to recruit some people who would like to help tear out the old carpet and move video games because obviously we have to move everything in the present arcade and then plus yeah. we want to build these video games and yes. put them back in so I think this is going to put us to about 23 video games that we're going to have back there. Cool. Actually, when you look at all the numbers in each one of the games, it's a lot more yeah. than that because these are multi cades some of them. So mm -hmm. it's going to be cool. So Pretty exciting. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So we will be open on New Year's Eve from 4 to 7. You're welcome to come. Invite your friend. She's hoping that. We're going to be open. Okay. You're moving <laughs> in faith. Okay, we'll go with that. Yeah. But we will be oh, open yes. from 4 to 7. And then we've got a Bible program that we're going to be doing. Yes. So how many of you guys have the version Bible reading app on your Let phone? Let me ask you this. How many people don't good. have the version Bible reading on their don't phone? Don't have it. Any? If you don't Not have it, many, it's free. Actually. You guys are, are in the first service. There was a lot more people that yes. were like, we have no idea what you're talking about. So you guys are in good shape. Yes. You guys are better. A little yep. more technical savvy. <laughs> So we're doing this as a group. If you want to join the group, I went through and picked out this particular um, Uversion devotional. It's called The King Has Come. And I picked it because it also has a kid section. So the beginning of the devotional is taught at a higher level. And then it says for the kids. And then they give you two or three scriptures that you read after you do the devotional in case you've never used Uversion before. So if you want to be part of our group, it's starting Wednesday. I also posted on Facebook, too. Like, put in the comments if you want to uh, be part of the group because you have to yeah. be a friend with one of us, and then we add you to the group, and we can kind of check in with each other, and you can leave comments about, like, what you learned from that or maybe what your kids learned. That would be fun. It's fun to share and in the group. <laughs> so. If you don't know about version, it's from Life.Church, and it's really cool. Everything is free. So you can download as many versions of the Bible as you want. I think I have like 10 versions on my phone now. And some of them read out loud to you, which is wonderful. <laughs> yes, it's really nice. Mine reads to me every morning on my way to work. I love it. Yeah, and if you're <laughs> looking for the app, what? what, what? Whoa. Whoa man, hey, there's your whole stuck. message. Did everybody get the download? Yeah, the okay. button's stuck. <laughs> so it looks like that right there. If you yes. go on it and look up in your app store or Google app store or Google you. whatever they call the Google. Why I have, you? You I have version. Apple, so it is you version. Yeah. Yeah, and you can just sign up for it and you can find people. And if you have any questions, ask Bethany. She'll help you find Absolutely. all the cool things. And this is a really cool Bible study to go through during the week because it's actually 12 days and it's 12 different people's yeah. looking at the birth of Christ. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. So I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you. God's good all the time. I have a cold, so I'm trying to fist bump everybody. I, I woke up and yesterday morning and said, I don't feel good. My wife has had a cold for a couple weeks, and she decided to share it with me. I did not want it, but I guess I kissed her or something like that, and I shouldn't have did that. But it's God's good all the time. So I've been fist bumping everyone. I chose to come this morning, so you have to excuse me if I sneeze or something like that. I'll have to interrupt this message to blow my nose. I'm sorry for that, but that's just a fact of life. But I want to take you a little bit deeper into the promised land, and we've been talking about that, and I've been studying on that and all that cool stuff, and now my switcher's not working now. There we go. Thank you. Um, I want to get you to how to... Now it's really working. My buttons are sticking. I'm ready to spit on them. How to possess the promised land. I've been talking about the promised land and how that so many Christians don't live in that promised land with God. They just kind of barely get by. It was really cool. Uh, I think it was last night that my wife got a phone call or maybe it was Friday night, whatever night. I don't know. I was sitting there and someone called and said, I'm getting into my promised land. It's so cool. And I want you to get in your promised land. I want you to experience what it's like to live for God in a life of abundance and a life of blessing. Now, I'm not talking about your, your bank account's always going to be full. I'm not talking about you're never going to have any problems. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about living in a place where it's fun walking with Jesus. That doesn't mean you don't have storms. Because the Bible said, in this life, you will have tribulation, right? But he also said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And we don't get that part. And so many people in the Christian church is barely are getting by and barely living in those promises. And I want to see you get into that place in your life because you have a promised land. And I've been talking about that. And this morning we're going to get into it a little bit deeper and go a little bit uh, into a tough spot. 
because it's going to be a little bit interesting when we're going to talk about some people. But I want you to get 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No one has ever seen or heard anything like this. Never so much as imagined anything quite like it. What God has arranged for those who what? Love him. Last week I preached on that. I said, when you love God, you release a completely different place in your walk with God. Now, there's people who are walking with God, but they don't love God. How many understand that? If you're married or in your relationship, you remember the day whenever you took the chance and you said to the person, I love you. How many remember that? And you're like, oh, this is a big risk. What if they don't say I love you back? What if they don't say it back to me? What am I going to do? You see, it's a different level. I'm moving from a place of just liking and playing around and just sitting there and hanging out with a person to like, I want to take this to another, another level. Now our world is obviously different than the way God wants us to do it. But God wants us to take it to another level where I'm not just walking with God because I have fire insurance and I don't want to end up in any judgment or anything like that. But I'm walking with God because one reason, I love God. And you've got to get that. And when you get there, God is going to bless you like you've never been blessed before. And, and I want you to get this. It doesn't mean you're always going to have everything. So much Christianity is like, I remember in the 90s when I was a young pastor, we went through the name it and claim it season. And maybe some of you don't remember that. But you would like name it and claim it. And be like, that's my field in the name of Jesus. God's going to give it to me. It was really funny. I, had a, I was listening to a pastor one day and he said, I have two sheets now in my fields and something else. And he was being sarcastic, being that he never worked with him. And it doesn't work like that. Just because we name something and claim it doesn't mean God's going to give it to us. Because God looks at it and asks him a question or two to you and I before we do it. Is it good for us? How many in here have prayed for something that you wanted that wasn't good for you and you're glad you don't have it today? Yeah, you all know what I'm talking about, right? Man, if I could have that job. Man, if they would marry me. Man, if I could get this. Man, if I could do that. And you tell God all the reasons why you wouldn't. Man, it would just make your life so much better. And God says, no. And if you're anything like me, you probably pitched a bit of fit when God said no. Anyone in here ever pitched fit when God said no? All right, Thrushians are liars. You can repent later just to let you know that. But you pitch that fit, and you're like, I don't understand that. Why, God, you wouldn't give that to me? And later on in life, you're like, wow, am I glad God didn't give that to me? Because it's not part of your promised land. It's not fitting into what God wants to do in your life. And that is to bring him glory and to build the kingdom of God through you. And man, there's so many people we can touch. You can touch. I can touch. I'll touch people you'll never touch. And you'll touch people I'll never touch. And we have the opportunities to give and the opportunities to bless. And he said we love them. So I want to go back to some of the Bible facts from last week. So I don't want you to forget this. It's about giving. And we're talking about giving because giving is one of the keys that releases your promised land, right? So remember, the word gave is in the Bible 659 times in 631 verses. How many know that's a lot, right? He's, the word give is 908 times in 862 verses. How many knows that's a lot? And then we sit there and given, and you find out that it's in there 472 times with 464 verses. How many knows that's a lot? So you total them all up, and it's in there 2,039 times with 1,957 verses. I think God's trying to show us something. God gives. God wants us to give. God gave. It was given. All through there, God is giving to mankind the chance to worship and to serve him and to adore him and to love him and to live in our promised land because God wants to give you your possession. That's so cool. I don't know about you, but man, when I learned this fact, I was like, God, this is awesome. There's more to this than just barely getting by. There's more to this than just barely living my life for Jesus Christ. I want to live that life in abundance. So the keys to unlock the promised land I talked about last week is number one is giving. Number two was what? The attitude. How many know attitudes can make or break you? How many of you ever met somebody with a really bad attitude that had a lot of potential? <laughs> Ben's pointing at his son. <laughs> Sorry, Liam. <laughs> but we get there. We don't realize that. We don't understand that. That You know what? 
Our attitude determines our future. Our attitude determines where we're going to be with God just the same way. God wants us to have that attitude. And this morning, I want to take you on a journey with the wrong attitude of giving. Because God asks us all to give, right? Luke 6, 38. Maybe you've memorized it if you've been in church very long. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. So with the same measure that you give, what? It'll be given to you again. So with that same heart, with that same thing, God blesses us. We release the blessings of God by what? Giving. If you don't give, God's not going to bless you back. Why? Well, I think the whole key, and my wife, when we were out prayer walking this week, she looked at me and she says, you know, Terry, the whole key to what you're preaching about is found in John 3.16. For God so loved, right, the world that he what? Gave what? His son. Right? Isn't that the key to the whole thing? Isn't that God's heart? For God so loved the world that he gave. And you know what? We should so love the world that what? We give. I grew up around people that they used to sit there and say, I can't wait till God judges them. I can't wait. I remember I was in one church and I was preaching in that church and I was like being an evangelist in that church and this lady, they asked if there was any testimonies. We used to have testimony services. Don't do those kind of things. You never know what you're going to get. But they had the testimony service. And this lady stood up and she said, I just want to let you know that I've been being a really good Christian. I saw kids out there drinking beer the other day and I walked up to them and I told them, they keep doing that they're going to hell. I thought, that probably works really well. <laughs> Not. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? But she thought she was loving people in the kingdom of God by telling them. I was trying to save them from, I, I knew other people back in the days when tracks, I don't know if you know what a track is, but tracks were a big deal back in, a few years back. And I remember I went out with somebody and they left a $100 bill fake track there. And I looked at this person that I was with and I was like, aren't you leaving a tip? That's the greatest tip they could ever receive. You know what I said? That's the cheapest tip I ever saw. How many know if you want to get someone's attention, you better tip them and bless them, right? Come on now, seriously. You know what? When people see us coming, I, we walk into Kings now. I, I love to bless people with tips when God says, hey, give them $20 or do whatever, and he just speaks them out. And it's so cool now. I have certain waitresses or, or servers. I'm sorry. I don't want to be sexist. Certain servers will walk up to me and say, you're going to sit in our section? How many know you're doing okay when you're doing that? When they're like, you come, wait, I'm going to wait on you guys today. My wife and I, we go out to eat after church at the same place at times. And, and one lady walks up and says, oh, come on, I got a booth over here for you. <laughs> How many know you get better service when you bless people? How many know you get more whenever you give to people? That's why the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. This is the season of giving. But we want to talk about, I want to get into this attitude in which it's done. And I want to take you to a story in the book of Acts. And it's confronting the attitude of giving. And it's in Acts 4, 36 and 37. Now, as you're reading through the book of Acts, it's written by Luke. And he's sitting there and he's talking about the birthplace of the church. After Jesus ascends into heaven and just some crazy, amazing things start happening. God pours out the Holy Spirit. And man, they, they touch the world. And 3,000 people in Jerusalem are, are, are following Jesus and, and are following with Peter and James and John as the world says they got saved. And man, they're just all the way in and they're just excited. And how many know whenever you get in those places and things are growing, it takes finances? Don't worry, I'm not preaching on today. You're safe. All right? Somebody's like, oh no, here we go. No, not doing that at all. But it says in Acts 4, 36 and 37, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the impossibles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So there's this man in this early church. He's sitting there and God speaks to him and says, you have a field, I want you to sell it and I want you to bless the church. So he goes out and he sells it. Now, the story is going to involve something like this. And the Bible doesn't say it, but it alludes to it. How many know that there's a lot of things that are alluded to that you've got to read outside of the little bit of the box of what's there? But when I see this, I can almost see as Joseph brings this offering. And we're just going to say, I don't know, it's $70,000. Don't worry, they didn't have dollars back then. 
All right. And he brings it in, he lays it at the boss' feet and says, God told me to do this to further the gospel. They're like, man, that's cool. We can buy a new sound system. We can buy cordless mics. We can buy some cordless guitars. No, this was back in that day. They didn't have any of that, but just go with the flow, okay? And we can bet all this stuff. We can become the church. We can get better food you know, things for the widows that we're feeding. We can get children's church and bless that, and we can do bless here, and we can bless there, and we can do all that stuff. And they're like all impressed, and I can see people going home saying, did you see what that guy did? Man, that was amazing what Joseph did. He, he sold all that. Man, that's just amazing. So the story continues, and we find two other people. They're called Ananias and Sapphira. You never want to be an Ananias or a Sapphira in the Bible. If you know the Bible, you already know where we're going. If you don't know the Bible, you're going to find out they're going to be dying to meet you. <laughs> All right? So Ananias and Sapphira, what they do is they're like, how many know that there's people who like to give to go, look at me? Right? How many know that? That there's people who are like, look what I'm giving. You know, that's not a real giver. You know, a real giver gives it. In secret, a real giver gives it humbly. A real giver gives it and says, I just want to give this because Jesus loves you and thinks you're amazing. So Ananias does something there. He talks to his wife, Sapphira, and they say, hey, we got a field. I know what we're going to do. Let's sell our field and walk in and give it to the disciples. And that's not like a great idea. Giving begets giving, I mean, after all, right? And we can sit there and walk in. But they did something. They sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge, and Ananias looks at Sapphira and says, you know what, we can still get the glory and say we sold it for $50,000, even though we sold ours for $80,000, and we can keep $30,000, $30, we can go to Cancun, Mexico. <laughs> and while we're there, we can swing over to the Bahamas. And we can even maybe pick up another vacation along the way. And they'll never be the wiser. And just think, we'll get an awesome applause. They'll think I'm wonderful. They'll think you're wonderful. It's a great plan. So they sit there and say, all right, this is what we're going to do. So here comes Ananias, and he's all happy. And he comes into Peter, and he's like, look, I brought this gift, and I brought you $50,000. I sold my property for $50,000. How much did you sell it for? Good. You paid attention to that, right? So he's got $30,000 to buy. Like, I sold it for $50,000. Look what I did. And my wife, oh, it's so amazing what we did. And it says he kept part of the money back for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Now, Peter's moving in the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you something, parents? One of the best things you can do is get full of the Holy Spirit because you'll blow your kids' minds. I'm just telling you that God will tell you things and help you raise your kids. He'll tell you things about situations that people will wonder how. I remember my daughter, she was, I don't even remember how old she was. But at that time, she wasn't old enough where she was allowed to have a boyfriend. And I walked into, we were walking through Giant Eagle one day, and I said, so, and I said her name. You'll see her at Christmas time. You can ask her if this is a true story, but she'll say Yes. And I said, so, um, why do you have a boyfriend? Her face flushed, and she's like, I don't have a boyfriend. I'm like, yes, sir, God told me you have a boyfriend. What's going on with this? I, I said, now, come on, we, we made a covenant here to, you know, do this the right way. She looked at me, and she goes, I don't have a boyfriend. I'm like, yes, you do. Okay, I do. <laughs> you know, she never forgets that story. And you know what I know? She'll do it to her kids someday. You see, God lets you in on the inside line, and that's what's going to happen to Ananias and Sapphira. Because he walks into Peter and he says, then Peter said to Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourselves some of the money that you received for the land? Now, listen, the land was whose? His. The money was whose? His. He could have did whatever he wanted to do with it. It wasn't the fact that he was keeping part of it back. The fact was that he was lying, saying, I'm giving you everything when I'm not giving you everything. Boy, I have never met a Christian like that. Have you? <laughs> have any of you ever met one of those kind of Christians who act like they're giving you everything, but they're like, well, really, I'm not. How many know what I'm talking about? I had a friend who was in martial arts, and 
He told me when he was like 16 and 17, he was so into it that he said, I, I put an axe in a crawl space and I crawl my way in there and I do push-ups with that axe blade there. And he said, you know, you can always do one more when you know you're going to die. Why did I tell you that story? Because I thought it was humorous. But you know what? How many know you can always do one more? I don't know if you've ever been to a gym where someone's like, that's all you do. Like, come on, you can do one more. And they do one more. You see, that's what he's looking at. He's looking at him saying, listen, I know you've got this, and you could have kept it, but you know what? You're not giving everything you've got. You know, God wants our everything. God wants us to be so in love with him that, you know what? We love him and do it just because. You know, I love my wife. I really do. She's the most awesome person in my life. Some days I don't like her, but I love her. Does anyone else in here not like your wife or husband at times? Okay, it's okay not to like him. She raised her hand, Garrett, I'm just telling you. How does that make you feel? She was really quick at it, too. It was like, I saw that. And they've only been married, what, a year, year and two months? Woo, when you hit 10 years, you'll see. But we've got to realize something that I love my wife, and you know what? You clean, you, you unload the dishwasher, I sweep the floors, I mop the floors, I do all those kind of things. Why? Not because I like to, but because I love her. And whenever we love God, it's that same relationship that we have. It's not necessarily something I want to do, but it's something I choose to do because of what? Love. And you've got to get that. That is the key to releasing God's blessings in your life is doing it out of love. Because remember, God so loved the world that what? He gave. How much did that cost Jesus? Man, I think about that some days when I read the story of the crucifixion of Christ. And I know and lots of people like Christmas. I love Easter. Easter is just like my I want to explode season. I love when I think about what Jesus did. I love when I think about the empty tomb. I love when I try to go through that whole season where, you know, they walk up and say, how are we going to roll away the stone? The stone's gone. I just, I love all that stuff. But God so loved the world that he gave. And the reason I'm telling you that is how much it cost Jesus. I, I sat there and I remember at one time I was in a doctor's office, an American uh, doctor's association or something like that. Actually, and this was probably in the 90s, I remember reading this magazine and it said, what Jesus would have went through on the cross. And I started reading the article. Now, listen, it was in a lot of doctor language, but they were talking about what the pain was like and all the things that would have shut down in his body and all the stuff that would have happened if the man would have had what happened to him happen to, to them. And I was like, man, he paid much too high a cross for our lives, but he did it because of love. And now God's looking at you and I, and he's saying, how are you going to give? If you want to get in the promised land, you've got to give, but it all depends upon your attitude. You know, some of those valuable gifts I've ever gotten have been little handmade cards off of kids. You know, most, some of the most awesome things in the world I have in my house that I cherish the most, I have one that's a plate that they made in Children's Church, and they said, I love you, Pastor Terry, and it's, someone signed their name on it, and it's still in my, my house where I look at it, and I think about that, and I think, how cool is that, that someone cared enough to make their plate for me? You know, you look at it, and it looks like it was just a dumb little plate. No, it was the fact that they gave it to me, and they gave it to you, and, and th that gift means more than, you know what, million dollars to me, because, well, I, they gave me a million dollars, I probably wouldn't like that, too. Just saying, I have to be honest right there, or else I'll be lying to God, so I can't do that. But in their heart, they were giving me everything they had. And you know what? That's what God wants out of you and I. He wants us to give with that abandonment. And Ananias and Sapphira are doing that. And it sits there, and he goes on the story, and he says, if my flicker works here again, and it's not having a good day today. He says, did it belong to you before it was sold? He said, and after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think you could of doing such a thing? And at that moment, Peter looks at him, and he dies. There's a bunch of young men there, it says, the Bible says, and they carried him out and they buried him. And after the young men came back, it says that here came Sapphira. And Peter walked up to her and says, how's it going, Sapphira? Thanks for the gift. Oh, oh I'm so glad you like that, Peter. It was really an awesome gift. Me and my husband sacrificed a lot. And he said, so how much did you sell for? $50,000. 
Yes. What's in your pocket? A plane ticket to Cancun, Mexico. Where'd you get the money for that? I don't know. It fell in my pocket. Doesn't that sound like some of us? You know, we make excuses like, where'd you get that? I don't know where. How many ever had kids like that? Like, where'd you get that? Whoa, how did that get in my hand? Right? We're like that a lot with God, aren't we? Like, what's, well, geez, God, the devil did it. It had to be the devil of God. But we got to realize, she sits there and says $50,000, and this is what Peter says to her. The feet of the men who carried your husband out are now going to carry you out and bury you, and she drops dead. Now listen, this is not the heart of God, but what was happening was there's, in this moment when the church was being formed, God was trying to tell the people, listen, this isn't something that you try to position yourself to make yourself look better by giving. This is something that I want you to give because you love me and it comes from your heart. I have a little smiley face on my dashboard and you'll get to meet her. Her name's Kaylee. She's my granddaughter. And she's going to be here for Christmas. But she gave it to me once. We were down there building something for her mom and her dad. And she walked up to me and gave me the smiling face and said, I made this for you today. And I have it in my dash. And every time it rolls across my, my dash and every time it rolls back, I pray for her. Some days in Pennsylvania, I do a lot of praying because it goes back and forth on our really straight roads that we live on. But you know what? It's there for a purpose. And, and, and it's just a little thing that she made. But you know what? It means a lot to me. Why? Because she cared enough to give it to me. And you know what? That's what God said. God so loved the world that he gave to you, his only begotten son. And he says, if you want to unlock the promised land, you have to be willing to become a giver, but you have to be a giver in the right attitude. You know, everything that is mine, really, that is here on earth, God has given me the stewardship over it, and it belongs to me. But whenever I'm willing to give back to God, God sits there and goes, that's awesome. That's amazing. That's wonderful. You see, whenever you're here, and we have, fam- we have Fun Center going on. I almost said Family Fun Night again. When we have Fun Center going on, and, and all that's going on, and you're here volunteering, you're giving God time. Whenever we do outreach, you're giving God time. Whenever we do whatever we do or whatever you do on your own, when you see someone and God says, give them $20. And you're like, God, I only got 25 Have you ever done that and argued with God? Have you ever missed it and not obeyed God and the whole time away home you're like kicking yourself? Like, oh, God told me to do it and I didn't do it. Maybe I could go back. And God's like, no, you missed your opportunity. I hate when that happens. I've never done that, of course, but Garrett told me he did, so I just know his story. <laughs> Because I always obey God whenever God asks me to do things. I'm lying. (laughs) Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. But you know what? When we give like God wants us to give in that heart of love, that's what it is about. It's not about getting a position. And the sin of Ananias and Sapphira was they wanted everyone to look at what they were giving. That's why we have that in the Bible. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. It's not about the praise, it's about the heart. So if you're going to get in this promised land, you've got to be willing to give, but you've got to be willing to give with the right attitude. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked who can know it. How many know that you've always got to be checking your attitude? I do. And you know what the Bible says? The Lord tries the reins of the heart. But you know what? You have to let God try your reins. There's a lot of us that when God starts putting us in difficult places to sit there and to try us, what do we do? Start saying, God, deliver me. Why are you doing this to me? I thought you loved me. Has anyone ever done that? Ever taken your kids to a doctor where the doctor's like, hold them down? And you're like, he's not going to like what I'm about to do, but if we don't do this, it's not going to be good. So how many have ever done that? Has anyone else ever done that in here besides me where you had to hold them down and you see the face they're making and you're like, they look at you like, why are you doing this to me? I thought you were my mother. I thought you were my father. I thought you were here to protect me and you're throwing me to the wolves. Well, how could you do this to me? How many know that you have to have the shot? You have to get the infection out. Whatever is being done, it has to be done. Or what? There'll be consequences. You know, God does that to you and I in our lives where he's pulling things out of our lives and we're like, how could you do this to me? I really like that person. And God's like, yeah, I know. That's why I'm getting them out of there because you know what? They're not good for you. 
and we try to cling to them, hold to them, and we've got to get that heart where it's like, God, I don't care what you ask me for. I don't care what you want in my life, God. I want to obey you, and I want to do it with a right heart where it's not everyone knowing what I'm doing. It's not everyone seeing what I'm doing. It's not everyone praising me for what I'm doing. It's because, God, I do it because I love you. Would you stand with me this morning? So I realized that releasing the promised land is going to be me giving and the right attitude of giving. Now that we got those two things, we can start getting into our personal promised lands that God has made for all of us by releasing it by our giving and our attitude. Now the devil is constantly and evil is constantly going to try to make you a cheap giver. I'm just telling you right up front. He's going to constantly try to get you, the problem with man is we enjoy pride. We all like a pat on our back. You know, I've had companies in my life and I realized that, you know what, a lot of my employees didn't like Christmas bonuses as much as they liked something special that I'd go buy them and say, hey, I really appreciate what you're doing. You know, I found out that people would sit there and do whatever to get a plaque because you know what it was a reward they were there like wow I'm appreciated God loves you I want you to get that every step you take God loves you he is working in your life through you for his glory but the ride is out of this world if you'll take the talents if you'll take the abilities if you'll take the things that God has given you and use them for the glory of God but it has to come with the right attitude. If you join the worship team and you're up here like, man, I really rock in the worship team. I make the worship team. Can I tell you something? You'll kill the worship team. If you go to children's church or youth group and say, man, if I was in the youth group, the youth group would die. You'll kill the youth group. Or you'll kill anything else in your life. You've got to stay humble and realize it is a privilege. Would you say that with me? Privilege. privilege. It is a privilege to give to God. It is a privilege to serve other people and see their lives changed. It is a privilege to experience his love. Father, I pray over this group of people. Lord, I thank you for bringing them from the north and the south, the east and the west. I praise you, God, for bringing them from all over this area. And God, I thank you for letting them experience you. God, I want to see them get in the promised land. God, I pray today that you encourage them to give, but God, I pray that you encourage them more, Lord, to what is the reason why they're giving. Father, I praise you for the giving hearts. I praise you for giving lives. I praise you for always blessing us. God, I pray that we would become the most cheerful giving church around. That, God, we love to give and love to serve. Because, God, we want the heart of you, and you loved and served us. And God will give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. And everyone said, amen. And to do that, God gave you miracle power. You just got to walk in it. I was so tickled pink this morning. I'm going to tell him your story you told me. You shouldn't tell me stories right before church. <laughs> Tim walked up to me and he said, I'm going to play the bass guitar on Christmas Eve. I didn't yes. even remember that Tim played the bass guitar. But he looked at me. That wasn't the important part. He said, I realize if I have a talent and I'm not using it, that's not right. And I thought, that's really cool, Tim. Seriously. I hope all Ians get that. If you have a talent and you're not using it for God, you're not using it right. And it's cool that God does that. You're going to get that. It's not about you. It's about him. And you know what? One man can change the world. One woman can change the world. It might not be the whole world, but it's going to be somebody's world. And this year, I know it's Christmas, we think about giving. I pray that you'll sit there and quit worrying about the gifts and say, God, what can I give of my life this year? Coming up, 2023, because some means I can sell you on 2022 because it's almost over. But I'm talking about 2023. What can I give to God this year? What can I do for God that will change the world? I want to be a giver. Do it for the glory of God. Because you got miracle power.